In this screencast, we will discuss blunt renal injury as part four in our series on blunt abdominal trauma. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to describe the relevance of particular renal injuries to the grading system. You should be able to describe key features to diagnosing and collecting system injury and understand some of the next steps in management based on imaging features. A key decision often comes down to non-operative or non-interventional management, so conservative management, versus using some form of angiography to treat bleeding or stenting to treat a collecting system injury, versus having to go to surgery, which often results in a nephrectomy in the case of blunt renal trauma. The renal trauma grading scale, like the other grading scales we've discussed, was revised in 2018. Grades one through three tend to require no intervention. These are subcapsular hematomas or contusions or small lacerations without injury to the collecting system. Grade four injuries are often gonna require some form of angiography to stop bleeding or may require some intervention within the urinary tract to address a collecting system injury. Grade five injuries tend to be extremely traumatic injuries that are causing substantial vascular damage or large volume bleeding and are often gonna require angiography or surgery. So let's look at these. Grade one tend to be small contusions or subcapsular hematomas. Grade two lesions can be larger hematomas or lacerations less than one centimeter. Grade three are lacerations that are greater than one centimeter but do not involve the collecting system. Grade four are deeper lacerations often involving the collecting system resulting in urinary leak and can involve small vessels. Grade four, five injuries tend to be devascularizing injuries where there is injury to a large artery or vein or a shattered kidney. So let's look at a few examples of renal injury. In this case, there was a, a groom working with a horse, the horse kicked the broom, the broom hit the groom, and he came in with bruising to the right abdomen. We can see in this instance, when we look at the right kidney, okay, we can see a hematoma here along the kidney, but in addition to the hematoma, we can actually see these two clefts in the renal parenchyma, and those are both consistent with grade three lacerations. We can also confirm at least a grade three laceration extending into the renal hilum, because there is extension into the renal hilum, there is risk for collecting system injury in this case. So this is at least a grade three laceration. In order to further evaluate the integrity of the collecting system, a CT urogram was done. Now, if you had identified these lacerations while the patient was still on the CT table, we could have done a 10 or 15 minute delayed scan and that would have served the same purpose as the CT urogram. But this person came off the CT table, the laceration was then seen to extend into the hilum. So they were sent back for a CT urogram to assess the integrity of the collecting system. In this case, we see a very small amount of hyperdense contrast along the renal capsule on the urographic phase. So notice the collecting system is now filled with contrast because this is a delayed phase where the kidney is already excreting contrast into the collecting system. And we see this area of hyperdensity along the capsule, and that's consistent with leak from the collecting system. So while this looked like a grade three laceration on the initial study, it was actually a grade four laceration. Now, this was a small amount of leak, and because it was a small leak, Urology opted not to place a stent to decompress the collecting system, but instead manage this conservatively. The patient did, however, have persistent hematuria. Due to the persistent hematuria, there was concern for communication of the collecting system with a vascular structure, and we got a CTA. The CTA showed a pseudoaneurysm within the lower pole of the kidney. It's possible that the pseudoaneurysm also was leaking blood into the collecting system, and that may have accounted for the persistent hematuria. This person was taken to angiography, which confirmed a pseudoaneurysm, which was treated with coil embolization. Now let's take a look at another case example. In this instance, the patient was in a motor vehicle collision. We can see a perinephric hematoma along the kidney, but in addition to that perinephric hematoma, we can see a large laceration it's resulting in separation of the upper and lower poles of the kidney. In this case, the degree of injury was noticed on the initial CT 
and the patient remained on the CT scanner table for a delayed phase, somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. On this delayed phase, we can again, like on the CT urogram, see contrast within the collecting systems, but in addition to the contrast in the collecting system, we can see multiple areas of hyperdensity outside the expected collecting system. This again is consistent with a collecting system injury. In this case, again, a Foley catheter was placed to decompress the bladder, but there was no stent placed into the ureter. There is some thought that these collecting system injuries can heal without stenting, and that stenting may cause additional disruption to the collecting system, although at times a stent is placed at the discretion of the urologist. Again, this delayed phase is going to serve a similar purpose to the CT urogram in the patient we saw before. Lastly, we have a 21-year-old man who was chased by police on a motorcycle and wrecked at high speed. When he presented for his CT, we got a multi-phase CT. And on the arterial phase, we can see the left kidney and the spleen show no enhancement. We do, however, see a very small area of hyperdensity on the arterial phase in the region of the spleen. And that hyperdensity greatly increases around the spleen and the kidney by the delayed phase. There may also be a small hematocrit level in the dependent portions of the perinephric space. All of this suggests active extravasation with devascularization of the kidneys and is therefore a grade five renal injury with devascularization of the kidney and spleen. This patient was hemodynamically unstable after resuscitation and therefore went emergently to the operating room. And at exploratory laparotomy, they performed a nephrectomy and splenectomy due to devascularization of both organs and active extravasation. In summary, grade one to three injuries are often non-operative. Grade four injuries can be managed conservatively, but are more likely to need angiography to address bleeding or stenting to address collecting system injury. Grade five renal injuries are often gonna require some form of angiography or surgery. One of the pitfalls of surgery for blunt renal injuries is that there is a very high rate of nephrectomy. So if possible, it is often preferred to not go to surgery, manage with angiography or stenting, and see if any of the kidney remains viable. If the patient is unstable, surgery may be required, and again, a nephrectomy will often be the result. Thank you for your attention. I hope you've enjoyed this series on blunt abdominal trauma.